Welcome to this episode of KDE News where I talk about some of the features that KDE is implementing and actually how they are implemented so we can actually learn a bit how it works behind the scenes and if you want eventually maybe you can start working on some of these things too. Now the major features of this week are like the gestures but I've done an entire video about them so maybe it's only fair to do some smaller stuff that we can actually see really easily how they are implemented so we learn the most out of them. But before we get into that, as always, thank you to the sponsor of this video, which is nobody. I'm doing this in my free time and if you want to help me do this kind of things, like actually develop for KDE, but I also do like my own life, I write poetry, this kind of things, I'm allowed to do them because there are people who sustain me and you've seen the videos on, uh, on um, names on the screen, patrons, donations. So if you manage to, if you have the possibility, it would be amazing to receive a little donation. But of course, that's up to you and let's actually get to the video. I choose these four, one, two, three, four. So the first one is the task manager. This one is about wallpapers. This one is just a commit and it's about cube render. And this one is about the battery monitor. Let's do them. This one, increase pacing in tablet mode. I think it looks pretty good. So the idea is, this is a ThinkPad uh, that supports tablet mode. And so when you actually rotate the computer enough, it actually enters tablet mode. And the idea that is being implemented on since uh, quite some time ago at this point, Nate is doing lots of great, great work about this, he is making the margin of the buttons and buttons bigger when you are in tablet mode, but only when in tablet mode, so it's easier to use. My personal criticism to this partially is that we cannot always know if touch input is used in tablet mode, I would prefer a UI to be always usable with touch regardless of uh, tablet mode, but surely if we know for sure that the user is going to use touch, it's better to make that buttons bigger. So in this case, we're talking about the task manager and you can easily see that when you switch from one mode to another, the size of the buttons changes. So that's the point. This changes um, the config slightly. Before we had this spacing between icons, small, normal, large. And when we have tablet mode, it's automatically set to large. So you can actually manually configure it to be always large if you want, but also small if you prefer some compact stuff. And about this, there is a lot of talk about uh, going on in KDE about having a more general option for um, information density because we observe that some people really prefer to have as little margin as possible whereas a lot of people would like all of the elements to uh, be well touch usable for uh, sure but also maybe also preacher some people prefer it that way i personally do with more margin around them but even just in the task manager, an option to change the spacing and making sure that when you're in tablet mode, there is more spacing. How is this implemented? Well, first of all, we add the label that we've just seen that says under a set of, sorry, automatically set uh, to large when in tablet mode. This one is the text that we, before this one, the one I was reading under a set of radio buttons when the uh, tablet mode is on, it's actually the description on how this string is used. Uh, as an example, this could be useful in translations to actually know what is the context of uh, this sentence. If you get to translate a string without any context, it's pretty hard to understand it. And this is visible. Let's zoom in. Uh, thank you. GitLab, so beautiful. This is only visible when Kurigami settings table tablet mode. So when you are in tablet mode. Kurigami settings tablet mode is Kurigami abstracting over tablet mode so that you don't have um, all application to implement their own thing to read if we're in tablet uh, mode or not. It's just handled, handled, handled by Kurigami. Then, of course, we have the buttons and uh, there's no longer a huge button, but there is a big one, which is just above here, large. And we can see that if we are not in tablet mode, this is enabled 
as in you can actually select large if you are not in tablet mode and this also applies to normal and small right now we're talking about the settings part of it and it is only checked checked it is only pressed if we are not in tablet mode same for normal and here checked becomes here if we have selected uh, if we have selected it or we are in tablet mode so this is the settings part of it now where do we actually read the settings or well this one where is it these options of small medium large uh, spacings were actually implemented already even before this patch and they are read in the task manager item qml to actually set uh, the margin between to the left and to the right of each icon in the task manager the only other thing we change in this particular patch in the layout.js that we see that the spacing adjustment you, we, we are here saying let's check the spacing between the icons but if we are in tablet mode then it's always three what's three well we've got one which is small two medium three large so three is large same thing here icon spacing only if we are not in tablet mode otherwise always be regardless of what the user decided and that's the whole merge request that's it so it's really easy to understand understand some merge requests next one i'm not going to go through the code but i thought it was pretty interesting as a concept and this was this one was actually uh, let's say rejected from the reviewers as it shouldn't be part of KD plasma but we'll see so this is what it did you add an option use random colors which does this what do you think w would you would you use this would you use this there has been some discussion about this and at the end it was preferred to actually still make this available for everyone so you can use this right now but on the KD store instead of being part of KD Plasma and that's a very nice thing I think because even if something gets rejected we could say even from the community you can still propose it as part of the KD store and anybody can still use it it's just not part of the default install but it's still there to be used this one then this one is literally a one line change that is pretty important. So if we are searching for something in system settings, like the name of a category, then we might tie for, I don't know, this is GNOME search as an example, and I could search for audio like this. And if I search this, I expect the audio category in system settings to open up if I'm in KDE. Now, what I typed is audio lowercase but maybe the section is actually audio with the A capitalized. So what this does is simply saying, if the keyword starts the keyword being actually the key keyword uh, in the system settings file. So as an example, uh, audio could be a keyword of the sound uh, KCM. If it starts with the query, then, um, I mean, we are checking if it starts with the query, but do this in a case insensitive way, which is pretty important. And just like that, it makes results of KD Runner when searching for um, system setting sections more reliable. Last one, this one is the before, this one is the after, let's compare them, this, this. So you can see that instead of having power save balance performance, now there are just two icons on the left on the right and power profile and performance on the top. So we basically killed balanced and we added icons. So why balance was killed? Uh, because of German. I mean, some languages like German are very long and they don't actually fit the space that uh, it's given them by the UI. And so they get elided. So it was discussed how to avoid this. And eventually we were like, okay, let, let's just get rid of the middle one. Now there's enough space, but to make this more clear, let's actually add the icons. Let's give a look on how this is done, changes. So we've got a row with first element, a label, which is power profile, is it? Second element, another label with the text being the active profile data label, which probably is 
the profile that you, you're using. So performance, it's going to be written performance. Balanced, it's going to be balanced. Power save, it's going to be power save. In here, we actually add the repeater of, where is it, labels to actually, you know, um, write all of the profile uh, data names to have all of them. Now it was removed because there was not enough space. Then we add an SVG, which is Icons Battery SVG, which is not actually an SVG element in the UI. It's just a reference to be used later by the SVG item. The SVG items takes the SVG that we defined here. We ask for the element called profile, profile uh, power save, and then we say, okay, it should have this size. Similarly, here we've got another element from the same SVG, and this is why the SVG declaration is separate. This time we want the element profile performance with this size, and between them, just an empty item that fills with to make sure that this is left, left aligned and this is right aligned. And that's it, really. Uh, this adds a couple of ideas, but it's mostly unrelated, I think. So just like that, some pretty nice feature of KD Plasma were implemented. And sure, we are not talking about incredible changes which will change everybody's life. Uh, like, I mean, one-to-one -one just source are incredible changes. This one maybe aren't, but when you're using KD Plasma day to day, well, being able to search for system settings in KeyRunner or Kickoff even, is pretty important, just like it is to being able to see what profile uh, you're selecting, just like it is super important to be able to set a random color to your wallpaper every second, I guess, for somebody. So thanks for following and see you tomorrow with another video.